We're going to now make a turn and talk about a first-hand look at what could be the beginning of a new Darfur. The same government accused of crimes against humanity and genocide there are, is now being blamed for a new wave of violence targeting African tribes in Sudan. 585,000 people have been forced to flee, according to the United Nations, most in the Nuba Mountains. And as in Darfur, Sudan's government is keeping humanitarian workers and journalists out, in effect, keeping what is happening a secret. In the Nuba Mountains, just the sound of their own government's warplanes sends people running. In fear of bombs, thousands of people, most of them children, live in caves, virtually cut off from the world. To reach them, we must go where journalists are banned. Next stop will be Nuba Mountains. So right now, we are in the undisputed part of northern Sudan. Yes. Our guide, 30-year-old American humanitarian Ryan Boyette, who has been documenting the attacks on civilians. Is it okay? Uh, my name is Ryan Boyette. I'm with Faiza Hassan. Videotaping eyewitnesses who say they saw murder, systematic rape, and evidence of ethnic cleansing. In a refugee camp, Asia Ishmael Daloka tells us they called us dogs and said we are the only people because we are Arab and you are Nuba. I don't know why they hate us. Young Shamaya, orphaned along with her four brothers and sisters, is still in shock. They bombed us where we were, she says. My mother covered all of us with her body and died. All this material, these... A rebel leader shows us the arsenal, he says, was seized from government troops. All of it? Yes. The truck? Even truck. Including Kalishnikovs, he says belonged to the elite unit known as Abu Tierra, led by the governor of this region, Ahmed Haroun. You know that Ahmed Haroun has been accused by the International Criminal Court yes. for crimes in Darfur. Yeah. Behind an armed escort, we finally reach the Nuba Mountains. People in them? Ryan leads yeah. us up the rocks, and there we Obviously. find 64 year old Hannah Cooley, who is struggling to find food to feed 12 children separated from their families. She sings, There is no comfort in this world, weeping as a bomb falls. There's one more in the cab. A few hours later in the darkness, we find the victims. There was an Antonov earlier today, and it's, it's hit this woman in the chest, and now her, her lung is actually exposed. She's in so much pain. Four Nuba women hit by the shrapnel. At least one is not expected to survive the six-hour drive to the hospital. Now a famine is looming and the international community is trying to figure out what, if anything, can be done to stop it. You can see more of our report about Sudan tonight on Rock Center with Brian Williams at 9, 8 central time here on NBC, Matt. That's a powerful story and thank you very much.